welcome <laughs> hey guys um, I figured I was going to be working on my uh, Dark Angels here and so that pistol on um, Cypher's hand it just was not working for me and so I decided to print a uh, a few extra pistols uh, <laughs> you can probably just uh, barely make out uh, here there we go so I printed a fair few pistols um, and so these are It's actually printed out pretty freaking good. Um, just doing a bit of a wash and a cure on them real quick. Uh, nice. So what I'm going to do now is I've just finished rinsing them. And of course this... Um, sorry, this uh, uh, slate or slag that you see here is actually a damaged screen um, that I got directly from Voxlab. Um, the screens I've, bought, I've got before from Amazon, ironically, that are for a uh, Igloo Mars, fit just fine in the Voxlab Proxima. Um, connections are, are identical, dimensions are identical. You know, all you've got to do is flip the cable. Um, namely, um, the uh, add on cable, you've just when you add it, connect it to, to the ZIF connector, zero, for, uh, zero force insertion connector, or ZIF for short. Um, when you add the ZIF um, connector, you have to uh, flip it upside down. It still works, nothing, nothing changes, um, because I actually have one of their um, screens on my old 5.5 uh, inch printer that still works it's just the reason why I stopped using that printer and you're going to see why in a second because I'm going to show you why is now as you can see this is like a brand new print bed why because it broke it came like this this is a complete and total manufacturer defect um, I have sent several emails to Voxlab about getting a new one sent to me and they said send me back your entire printer. They wanted me to pay a hundred and something pounds shipping to ship back my entire uh, 6.0 printer because that's what this came from. This print bed belongs on my 6.0 printer. This print bed which, by the way, okay, fairly loose, okay, doesn't move at all. Can you hear it rattling? No. Okay, ready? Broken. Perfectly fine. This one belongs on my 5.5 inch, but it also works for my 6 inch, because the print beds are, uh, dimensions are identical. You can even see, you know, they are identical, only this is a piss poor attempt at making a bed, a, a, a bed. Whoever made that was so incompetent and lazy that they need to go back to machining school. Because it's clear that whoever designed it did not know what they were doing. They, a, 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 a GCSE level one in structural engineering could make a better product. A scrub who's never touched a piece of physical hardware could do a better job. See look, you saw me just physically violate it. Nothing. Ready? Same thing. And it has nothing to do with, oh, tighten the screws. The screws are tightened. The ball on this print bed is so small 
that the set screws don't set it ever so even if I did and tighten this thing up okay and I tighten this thing all the way up okay that is not straight that is cockeyed okay and even if I started messing around now bear in mind okay the print arm catches it to a max of that which is about four threads so that's the max it's going to catch right that's still too much play that is still too much play for a print bed to be safe so that print bed is faulty it needs to be sent back to Voxlab and a replacement needs to be sent but Voxlab won't send me a replacement they, they just won't I've asked them multiple times to send me a replacement their response is uh, set shippers back your entire uh, uh, Proxima 6.0 printer please I'm like why do I need to send you back my entire printer for a part just ship me the part now because the screen from Voxlab I might add is damaged I have to drain this every freaking time which technically you should do every time anyway to prevent wasted resin okay now you're seeing me do this real time you're hearing me do this real time but you're gonna see one of the reasons why I suggest you don't buy Vox Labs parts that you buy Igloo's parts instead because Igloo parts are always in stock and I'm not exaggerating their stuff a good 99% of the time is always in stock even in things like Black Friday seat deals or whatnot now you're gonna see uh, I'll use this overhead you're gonna see what I'm talking about this is a damaged screen okay the screen itself is what's projecting this print it's not the model it's not the files because this happens on every print it is the screen itself that's damaged now also bear in mind that this this uh, um, FEP sheet needs to be replaced soon because it's it's webbing um, a webbing sheet is not a good thing so uh, what I mean by that is you, you'll see why here in a few minutes um, as you can see that's not part of my print that's what's known as webbing oh, well, uh, artifacts print artifacts and there's also some print artifacts showing now on this side too that are constantly showing now normally use some IPA here real quick just to cut it there we go. I'm putting no pressure whatsoever on this none no pressure and all I'm doing is moving any loose resin artifacts okay see resin artifact that's what will cause a print to fail now some of you out there who are 3d printing gurus probably looking at this and going And your teeth are probably like, you know, because I'm doing everything wrong. I'm actually not. I've been 3D printing now for about four, three and a half years, four years now. So I kind of know what, what I'm doing. Uh, models on this table kind of tell you that I should tell you that I know what I'm doing. 
most of these models I've put the supports in or built the supports myself. I rarely ever buy pre-supported miniatures and the reason why I very rarely do pre-supported miniatures anymore is because most of the time the software that they use for those supports is going to be lychee and I've already done a video it'll be up on one of those note card thingies as to why you should not use lychee for pre-supports uh, you should always learn to pre-support your own miniatures Right, so this is just IPA, isopropyl alcohol. This is medical grade 99%, so it cuts through this like butter. Uh, if you cannot get medical grade, get what you can. I know Family Dollar or Dollar Tree or Dollar Store or, you know, do carry 80%. 80% will get the job done too. Um, just don't get the 60%, the green stuff, which they say is medical grade, it's not it's mislabeled now what you're seeing here okay and to get it to show up I will get something you know I just use my shirt okay you can see these gray clouds here that's called webbing and that's what happens when uh, uh, suction cups or, or resin suction uh, happens or you've put uh, the supports aren't correct or whatnot that's what happens when you buy pre-supported miniatures as well is again the software that they use is 90% of the time lychee slicer no disrespect to lychee I've used their stuff before in the past I had a pro license for uh, oh gosh a year and a half but what made me stop using Lychee and move over to different software is the fact that when I started having uh, profile printer issues, namely none of my prints were working, period, no matter what profile I used. And in fact, it actually dam uh, some of the prints actually physically damaged my printer. Um, because some of the uh, actual prints physically damaged my printer, my screens, my s and whatnot, I um, said to Lighty Slicer, went and used Cheetubox of all things, the default program that you're supposed to use, and the very first print that I used with Cheetu worked just fine. Printed just fine. Only thing I changed orientation was the same, supports were the same, everything was the same. All I changed was I used Cheetu Box. That's it. Same file format, same everything. And I even tried printing it again right after the... F uh, one fail, went to Cheetu Box, printed perfectly, went back to Lychee, failed again. In fact, it told me that the print was only gonna take three seconds. That's when I knew Lychee Slicer was the problem. So I jacked in Lychee Slicer, didn't even use it, didn't even use it for its auto orientation. I, I literally learned. Do it by learning, guys. Don't be lazy. Okay, seriously, don't be lazy. Um, there are some miniatures out there I've purchased, case in point, this Dreadnought. Um, this Dreadnought I purchased. Um, this is the, the old school Space Hulk. Uh, dreadnought model uh, well revisited or revised however you want to pronounce it um, I like it because I think this should be in 30k because that's what 30k uh, uh, is it's it's old school Warhammer 40k I think that um, that uh, uh, these guys should actually be in um, Warhammer 30,000 um, so that's what I'm going to be doing when I do my when I do my 30k army. I'm actually going to be using these guys as dreadnoughts. Um, I've got a 
regular version and the Chaos version. This is the Chaos version, of course, because why the hell not? Chaos is always a lot more fun. Um, and so, yeah, I printed all these um, extra guns and stuff, which, by the way, aren't aren't fully like cured or anything just yet. So, what uh, 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 fully washed just yet? So, what I'm gonna do is. You know what I'm going to use? I can't use that one. Actually, you know what I can use? <laughs> I can use this. Oh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a dunk tank. Now, you can get vegetable washers and stuff on Amazon for like eight quid. Get those, they're much better than what I'm about to do. They'll save you a lot more IPA as well. Um, I, unfortunately, don't care. Because I can buy more IPA. You just pour it in, like so. And normally I'll just squeeze it around. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Squeeze it around. Plus I'm, a, I'm out of gloves, so I'm buy some more gloves. I'm gonna have a shower anyway. Right, so leave them in there for about five minutes. In fact, what I might do is well, that's sitting. I'm going to get to my little pink tin. Now, a lot of people keep asking me about this little pink tin. And it's quite literally a soap and glory box that I found just sitting on the side of the street. Um, whoever got it for their birthday present or whatever took the soap and whatever and didn't want to use the tin for anything. Well, I use it as a cure box, as a UV cure box. I've got some uh, UV lights uh, strip LEDs. Um, this is the power brick for them, and I usually just grab it, bung it in. As you can see, there's the UV light, and so I then take this, which will instantly start turning because <laughs> of the UV. UV light causes it to spin because it's uh, uh, solar powered and uh, so we have it's fine it's just not IPA I can it'll evaporate and so pop the top there you go now it's going And then so, usually, just a couple of, just usually not even a minute, less than that even. And all I'm gonna do is just bung them in here. And let them cure. Yes, I'm letting them cure while still on the sprue. I know that's not all of them, but uh, bungle it on top and because it's got to reflect all the light. And then I tend to just give it maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So, what I might do is with oh, it's over there. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Set the alarm for 30 seconds from now. Okay, so my alarm's gonna go off, and when it does, I unplug it, 
take them out, rinse and repeat. We've got regular bolt pistols, plasma pistols, hellkite pistols. The only thing we don't have is side cannons. Because I don't need them. And the reason why I made extras is because it's always good to have extras. Because I'm going to be doing some close combat squads here soon for my uh, Black Legion. I washed a uh, non bolt pistol. That's fine. Uh, my alarm should have gone off by now. I don't know why it didn't, but it should have. Alright, so let me move my phone because I might want that there. So I'm going to ink, disconnect it. You can overwash and you can overcure. Just FYI. When you overcure a model, it becomes brittle, and I mean like super brittle, to the point where just trying to clip uh, the sprues off, the trees, whatever you want to call it, um, will actually break the model completely. It will shatter like glass. Ask me how I, how that how that will happen. attention was the sound of it rotating and I was like, what the hell is that buzz noise? I looked over and yeah, it had gone poof because it over cured. So yes, it is possible to over cure a model. Um, if you really just want to cure a model like briefly, um, you can get yourself Can buy yourself one of these. This is a UV torch. Um, some models um, that are being stubborn and don't want to go together, um, what I do is I take some resin, I have a little 
uh, uh, black uh, pill bottle here in the UK. You can get some tablets that are uh, UV sensitive, and so the bottles themselves come in like a UV projective sleeve. So I put some resin, reg regular resin, like what I'm using. I just shake it up, take a brush, dab it between two, hold the two parts together, and I grab this and I quite literally just hold it over it for a few seconds. There you go, this part is literally curing as I'm talking. This part is literally curing as I'm talking. There you go. I can literally see it hardening. There you go. This plasma pistol is done. I can actually feel it harden. And also you can see the um, if there's excess resin still inside, it will turn cloudy. It'll get like a white powdery substance on it. In fact, I have a um, la uh, uh, a Rhino that I 3D printed as a test for my six inch print. I just to test to see how big what it could print, and um, I didn't cure it properly. And um, I went to wash it properly afterwards and, and whatnot, and it's got all clouds on it and stuff. And I was like, ah, son of a bitch. But that's when I realized my six inch printer uh, did the job. Okay, that one's done too. This is turning out to be pretty cool. I like this. Again, just rechargeable batteries in this thing. Again, you know, less waste. Uh, okay, this one's actually done. Nice. Because you can literally see the re the the. the the resin harden and change just from the UV light because this is a 405 uh, marifretic wave wavelength which is why it's coming up white on the screen white or blue but it's actually purple And this is what other people just don't have the patience or the time for. It's just when it comes to 3D printing, they just want to go set it, forget it, come back in like, if it was up to them, 10 minutes, and they'll have a completed freaking model ready to be painted and assembled and painted. That's not how it works. I don't care how fast your settings are on your printer. That is not how it works. But sometimes this is what you've got to do as a modeler. Um, and and I am getting into doing like spaceships and stuff too, um, like Star Wars and Star Trek and stuff and whatnot, like full one 350 scale like I used to do. I used to buy a lot of the um, uh, one 350 uh, scale ship stuff, and um, now I'm 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 looking at buying some of the kits, but 3D printing upgrade parts for them. So, and even selling them, them as possible kits for other modelers out there. So, uh, let me know in a comment down below if, if you want to see that. Um, and if you do, I will put up on the channel for you guys to enjoy and uh, some STL files for you to preview and, and whatnot. And there we go. And no, having a bigger or brighter UV flashlight 
won't speed up the curing process. A lot of people seem to think it will. It won't. Um, this cures at the exact same speed as if I stuck it out in front of the sun. So, um, in many retrospects, it's how you retro bright something as well. Uh, you'd use hydrogen peroxide if you want to retro bright a piece of plastic and bring it back from like a yellowish color to a bright white. Same process, same process. You take a tank, fill it, put uh, 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 um, uh, hydrogen peroxide in it instead and uh, put your project in there, whack it with some UV light, come back to it in a couple of hours, bing, bright as you like. Yeah, this one's got excess resin on it, I can see it. You are gonna be a stubborn little shit, aren't you? Cause you got all that extra little detail. Okay, so you're actually done. You're come, you've come out nice. Ooh I'm gonna enjoy using some of these weapons. Yeah, but this I can see excess resin on it. The way the light's reflecting on it, on it tells me that's excess resin. I can't feel it, but that tells me that there is excess resin on that. On that. All right. And um, if you over-support something, this this is something that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Is is over-support. If you over support a model, okay, you don't think the model's gonna come out beautiful. It's not, it's actually gonna come out worse. Reason why is those supports that are holding up, like say the nose or the cheek or the chin or, or the eyebrow or whatever, yeah, that's taking up volume of detail on the model because you can't exactly make a flat or a round cone holding up his chin look like it's part of his chin. You just can't. Okay, so because you can't do that, because you, because you can't hide it like that. Now these ones went into the cure, didn't they? Yeah, and they're still a little bit. Now because you can't physically do that or hide that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, a lot of people don't seem to understand when I say over support. And if you look. Okay, these guns have basically no support. Maybe three, four supports max. Okay, one or two of them only have, this one has one, two, three, four. These plasma pistols have four max. So, um, I've, I've got heads that I've, I've, I've supported myself. They have one support. One, just one. Right on the base of the neck, the rest of the head just Prints just fine. No need for a support for the nose, the cheek, the chin, the ear, you name it. No need for any of that. None. And a lot of people keep asking me, it's like, how, how do you do it? How do you do it? I still have some of my failed prints and I keep them as kind of like a mark of shame kind of thing. Now, I don't need all of these. See, these ones, just, that one just drew, dried up like, like, cured up damn near instantly now I'm, I'm not going to be using all of these weapons some of these weapons I'm just going to put in a bits box and keep for when I want to customize a, 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 a model unit or case in point like these hand flamers perfect for sisters of battle like your, your HQ your Baroness or whatever her name is or the Cantoness or whatever you want to call her perfect for her Static pose, power sword, one hand, flamer, hand, hand flamer in the other. Inquisitor even. Um, really good if you want to do a custom Inquisitor for um, Mordheim, not Mordheim, um, Inquisitor or Kill Team. You know, it's always good to print extras, okay? Because you don't know if the print's gonna work the first time. Now the reason why I'm moving the torch back and forth is, but hopefully just to speed it up, yeah. Technically, that bolt piston in front of me is a failed print, but I'll keep it anyway. The reason why I call it a failed print is because some of the detail... Oh, no, 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 some of the detail is showing up now. Okay, all right, all right, all right. That pistol just redeemed itself. Uh, let's see. Now, I'm purposely leaving these ones in here to overcure, just to prove a point. Okay, while I'm talking to you, they are curing. 
you can hear it. You can hear the buzz. You can hear it buzzing. And I am purposely leaving it them in there for a few extra minutes to overcure to pr to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now these aren't overcured at all. In fact, they're all done. Okay. So these ones here didn't overcure. So. These ones in here did open cure. Woo! Hydrogen peroxide. Oh, get ya. Well, it's like rubbing alcohol anyway. Uh, so now I'm going to leave those there. I'm not going to touch them. But what I am going to do is unplug the power supply. You should always unplug your power supplies when you're not using them. That way they last longer because believe it or not even though you've got nothing hooked up to them power is still going through the transformer power is still going through the mosfets and various other things and whatnot and they do shorten mosfets have a shelf life power transformers have a sh have a shelf life the amount of times that i've thought i've had a power brick uh, uh, a, a power brick that's good i need to find out that that power brick actually went bad because an internal component went poof now let's put this away now that cost me about eight quid to do that UV cure box. Eight quid compared to the eighty or ninety quid that Egaloo wants for their washing cures. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't get a washing cure. Get a washing cure if if you are a professional model maker. I mean, case in point, this should tell you the level of detail. Now this is a modern fifty-four mil soldier with a Scar L. With a HHS site, um, a PQ, laser, night vision goggles. This is basically, I wouldn't say Dell, because Dell uses, uses M4s and uh, uh, M14s, but uh, this is, you know, special ops. This is US special ops. So, but there you go. And yeah, see? So you can get some detailed models doing whatnot, but washing cures are the way to go. Now, I'm going to try and use my clippers to take this flamer, okay, off the sprue. See how quick it came off? There you go. Done. Needs minimal cleanup on the knuckles. Well, that, that get these guys are, is what I would consider overcured. Okay, now can I? No, I can't. I was gonna say I was gonna try and say barrel first, clip, and then the rest will just break off. There you go. But you can see how brittle they are now because they're overcured. Same same type of pierce weapon. There's a Volkai. There you go. You can even hear it snapping and crunching. That tells me that they're overcured versus one that's not ready. This isn't overkilled at all. There you go. You didn't hear it break or click or anything. See? Not overkilled, overkilled. Okay, so this one isn't, this one's off, okay? There you go. You can hear them crunching like, like crunching up cereals, you know? Um, now I've got to be careful I'm getting close to the trigger guard but there you go and so overcured models do need a lot more cleanup got a lot more cleanup <sighs> yeah you can hear my snap crackle popping Ironically, this is the exact same gun I just yeah I just literally felt the hand shift on this so this hand's going to break off yeah, it's wiggling in my hand like a loose tooth. So, again, overcured, not overcured. There uh, you go. Again, we'll need a bit of cleanup. This is why a lot of modelers um, want to clip their models straight off the sprue. Right, black. 
literally it's the second they come out of the, the printer. And this is what I say to them, like, no, 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 no. Patience is a virtue. Not a lot of people have patience, though. But anyway, guys, um, this is another little midnight rant. Um, it's actually like 6 in the morning. Yeah, six. it's almost 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, so, yeah. Some of these uh, bolt pistols are coming out really cool. And again, all of this because I didn't like how the plasma pistol sat in Cypher's hand. So I'm doing all of this because I didn't like how the weapons sat in my custom Cypher's hands. So I printed all these pistols. <laughs> yeah, see that one just broke, the barrel just broke right off that one. Why? Because I was too busy and I was too too much in a rush. So that's actually a failed print right there. You can see these. Are, uh, cause these aren't over cured. So when it comes to weapons that have supports on their barrels and you know that the barrels are pre-drilled because now I know these barrels are pre-drilled I'm going to be a lot more careful when, see here it is so what I'm going to do is gonna clear it there you go and the barrel is fine and it's pre-drilled ha 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 saves me breaking up my micro drill bits more time saved so, don't be afraid, guys. Okay, um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, there's tons of deals out there to be had. You know, do a little bit of research first, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can buy it. Buy the, um, the, the, the printer. Just don't expect miracles, you know. Don't, don't expect it to just go print a gobur and come out with a full Titan. You know, or full night, or whatever it is that you want, okay? Because that's not how printer gobur actually works, okay? Now I'm separating specific weapons because of how long it takes to clean those up, as versus how long it takes to clean up others. Now I am actually quite starving, so I might go make myself some brekkie here in a bit. I'm thinking sausage eggs. Yeah, sausage and eggs. Fine. Oh, that's a failed print. Again, sometimes that you just get the odd one that just says nope. And when you do, you do. So, well, it happens. You know, it happens to the best of us. I mean, like I said, I've been 3D printing for four years, three, four years now, and even I get it wrong sometimes. So, all right. So only two, two failed technically so far. Let's just clean up. The, see, it's the Volkites I'm separate. If you, if you haven't noticed, I've separated the Volkites because the Volkites. Um, the way I orientated them is they most of the supports are on the barrel of the weapon Because a Volkite weapon doesn't have technically a barrel. It has like a magnetic field Kind of thing. I don't know. It's it's, it's mechanicus stuff to me. It's heretic. It's heresy Heresy like Hennessy. There we go So and these ones have hollowed barrels So the Volk Volkites were fine hollowed barrels do need extra care though and then there you go so we only lost two guns out of I think it was like 40 or something on my file two out of 40 and that's only because I rushed so there you go guys take your time you can do it don't be afraid give it a try um, if you are gonna get a 3d printer uh, resin 3D printer that is not FDM printer. Um, 
FDMs are okay if if you're looking to do rapid prototyping and whatnot of, of specific parts, things of that nature. That's not my thing. Um, I do have access to FDM printers. But as you can see, I have resins here because uh, I'm a resin printer. God, I like my resins. Uh, so yeah, next video is I am going to be officially putting uh, primer on the Necron Lord. Uh, again, mostly because I just I haven't painted Necrons in forever and I just really wanted to try and paint a Necron. Um, as well as spraying primer on the Kill Team Imperial Guardsman set right here. We've got a uh, plasma spe gun specialist. We have a flamer radio operator. We have a power fist. And we have a power sword. It's, I'm going to paint it up as if it's been eaten away by acid. So, like he's been stabbing a gene stealer or something. Or a xenomorph. So, we're going to throw some primer on the Necron Lord, the ta uh, on the Dreadnought. Uh, wax and primer on these guys. Uh, I might even put together the other Dark Angel, well, sorry, Fallen Angel uh, Space Marines as well, slash Cow Space Marines as well. And so, yeah, guys, uh, I'm gonna end the video here. Until then, guys, I'll see you on the next one.